Hello, Right On Con. Uh, my name is Emily Samuelson. I'm from the Learned Owl Bookshop in Hudson, Ohio. And we were asked as booksellers to answer some questions for all of you about what it takes for us to sell young adult and middle grade literature. Uh, the first question that we got was, what do you look for when, it, when hand selling um, a book? And it seems like a very obvious answer, but if we can tell a customer that we personally loved this book, they are 10 times more likely to buy it. So please keep sending us your advanced reader copies. Um, we pour over those when they come into the shop. We fight over who gets to take them home first. And, you know, we, we pass them around, you know, the employees at the store. And it's wonderful. And if we can say on the day that your book hits the store, like hits the shelf and it's for sale, and we can say, I read it, I loved it. It was so good. It kept me up all night. Customers are way more likely to say, great, I'm going to buy it. And then no time is wasted as far as, as the shelf time. Um, and that's wonderful. Gets your book out there that much faster. And on top of that, like we get to, to really enjoy um, reading things as well. So please keep sending those to us. We love it. Um, we also, I mean, we look for for content and and you have to remember that we're selling to the parents and not just the readers. So knowing what types of controversial subjects are covered, like sex, drugs, violence, violence against women, that is so helpful for us and incredibly beneficial because we can say, even if we didn't get a chance to read your book, we can say, you know, it's, it's really, really good, I've heard, but might not be appropriate for your 10-year-old versus your 17-year-old. Young adults is such a wide age range that it is really, really great for us to know the content of your books so that we can help um, sell to the appropriate customer as well. Uh, the next question we got is, what what's selling right now? Um, dystopian. It's still really, really great. Sci-fi is doing really, really well. Um, things that are like alternate takes on classic stories like Cinder by Meyer. Um, fabulous story where Cinderella is a cyborg. And, you know, that type of stuff, like, young adult crowds are eating that up. Um, you know, and I mean, of course, like, good good love stories are, are doing really well. As, and the, John Green is amazing. Um, for the younger crowds, things like James Patterson's Middle School, um, The Worst Years of My Life, and Die of a Wimpy Kid, those, those pseudo-graphic novel type things are doing really well. Um, and that's those are great to sell to the... Um, to the reluctant reader, they the presentation of those books is just a lot less intimidating than a books that are straight up novels that are just full of text. Um, the reluctant readers tend to gravitate more towards the Diary of a Wimpy Kid and James Patterson and things like that, and and that's great. It's uh, we like to refer to those kinds of books as almost like the the gateway drug to reading, if you will. Um, so those are doing really well. What's not selling? Historical fiction. I couldn't tell you why. Uh, it's just, for whatever reason, not an appealing subject for that crowd right now. Um, and and it's something that we really struggle with when it comes for that. If you can take historical fiction and put an awesome spin on it, we would love it, uh, especially for school assignments and things like that. We get a lot of assignments that are like, I need to read historical fiction. I don't really know what to read. It doesn't really appeal to me. We would love to find some really cool and, and interesting historical fiction. Um, but unfortunately, that's that's just not selling right now. Uh, another great question that we got was, what can authors and publishers be doing that they're not right now? Um, one of the things that we've noticed is that social media is so important. Um, I mentioned that John Green is, is an amazing sell right now. All of his books are, are just doing really well. A lot of that has to do with the fact that he has an amazing fan base because he interacts with them. If you watch him on Twitter and Facebook and YouTube, like he's doing so much out there to to talk to his fan base and and that is so appreciated by his readers. Um, so being present and being interactive is so important. And just it's it's free marketing if you really look at it that way um and then it's it's a lot of fun too you get to know your fans and and it's great so we see that that is really really important um 
author signings. Keep doing them. They're they're great. Again, a chance for your your readers to meet you. They love that, and and we love that, and it's it's just an amazing thing to do. Um, I hope that was helpful. I hope you're all having an amazing time at Right On Con. This is such an awesome, awesome organization um, that has come together. And, you know, hopefully we'll see some of your books on our shelves soon. And hopefully we'll get you in for signings. And we can't wait to see what comes out of all of this for you. This is amazing. And you're all wonderful. And just please keep writing. We love nothing more than, than the books that you come, come out with. So thank you so much. And have a great rest of your write-on con. Bye.